Now, the last consideration when we talk about um, essentially the submission process is who should be an author. And this is a part of the process that can be pretty sensitive. Um, what is authorship? What, what is uh, this thing that allows us to put our name on a paper and feel like we've made a contribution? This is something that varies quite dramatically from field to field or subfield to subfield. So I can't give you a definitive answer. My own personal opinion is that every author of a paper should have made a concrete intellectual contribution to making that paper happen. So let's talk a little bit about some of the, the considerations uh, that we should have in mind about authorship. So here's an example of a two-authored two paper, Robert Colwell and Douglas Futuma. And my understanding is that both of these men came to the table with some very interesting and concrete ideas, and they sat down and they both contributed to what is a massively cited paper. Um, so this is, this is a simple situation. We go on to a paper that might have 15 authors. And here we get into cultural differences. In the biodiversity world, for example, this first author is the, the, essentially the research leader. In the biomedical realm, this final author might be the research leader. And so we get into the, these cultural differences. And when we're talking 15 authors, it may not be that every one of those 15 uh, came to the table and, and provided critical, critical intellectual content. Uh, it may be instead that, that one of these authors did one step in the process. And so there, there are some, some value judgments involved here. And then here's an example from my own research group, uh, something that I'm very proud of because this is, what, 10 authors? But this is a full collaboration. We literally sat down and developed this set of analyses as a group. And so what we do when we finish up these papers is we assign a random number generator to each of the names and we sort them randomly. And we state that as such. Uh, so in this case, uh, first author, last author, uh, research leader, we're all mixed up together, but we're explicit about it. Uh, so these are, these are difficult questions, and these are, these are questions that require a lot of thinking. Just to give you some, some broad generalities, reasons for authorship. Well, maybe you wrote the paper. That's a pretty good reason to be an author of the paper. Maybe you provided critical intellectual input. Maybe you didn't write the paper, but you said, hey, think about this, this, this as a cause of that, that, that or think about testing this hypothesis. And that may be a really critical input. Maybe anybody could write the paper. The question is who could conceive it. And then another reason is that the person worked very hard in gathering or analyzing or processing the data. And that's a very valid reason to be an author. Now there are some other reasons. Maybe the lab is yours. Maybe you're the research leader, and that lab is yours. So should your name be on each and every paper? Or maybe the author of the paper is your student. Should the advisor be a part of every paper that the student writes? My personal opinions and the opinions in your field or your institution or your country may be quite different. To me, these three are obvious, and to me, these two are complicated. But basically, think about it. Authors should be people who made significant contributions to the overall effort of making that paper happen.